I'm not gonna lie, Microsoft. You done goofed when you released your 8th gen console. Mandatory connect, always on internet, and the gargantuan 600 pound life that accompanied your behemoth system. There's no denying that people had a big reason to back Sony's offering. However, Microsoft did fix many of its blunders, but the damage had been done already. The Xbox One S should have been the console Microsoft released back when the Xbox One first launched in November of 2013. But I'll cut them some slack because the Xbox One S is a dependable and pretty decent console. The Xbox One has come a far way from its original launch model. And so in this video, we'll go in depth and outline everything there is to know about Microsoft's Xbox One S. Let's begin. Well, 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 what do we have here? Do you know what it is? The Xbox One S. Give it up to Microsoft for the presentation. We see we have our Xbox One S branding accompanied by a couple free games we are to get. A nice picture of our Xbox with the provided controller, and we see that we get a one terabyte hard drive. On the top, we have Xbox One S branding. On the side, we see Xbox Game Pass being advertised. On the right, we have the contents of what comes in our box, and on the back, we have the same thing that is on the front. Grab your spatula thing that doubles as a sharp knife to cut off the stickers and slide the sleeve right up top to reveal the real box, with the Xbox One S and controller being portrayed elegantly, front and center. Open up the box, and first thing we're greeted with is a green Xbox One S booklet, basically a quick start guide that shows you how to get up and running. Keep digging and you stumble upon your accessory box, which includes your standard figure eight power cord with the now absent power brick. This is a huge win for Xbox. You have no idea. The power brick on the old Xbox one was the size of a literal eggplant. I'm not even kidding. Additionally, you'll find an HDMI cable and a slightly redesigned controller accompanied by a set of AA batteries. Imagine how annoying it'd be if Microsoft didn't supply these and you had to make an annoying quick trip to the store. Anyway, the show goes on and we have our packet which includes some codes for our free games and a month to try out Microsoft's Game Pass. I'm actually excited about this. It's like a Netflix for video games. Stream a great selection of titles to your heart's content for a low monthly subscription charge. But finally, we arrive to the star of the show protected like an opposing lineman. Remove the styrofoam padding and remove the film that protects it during shipment and there she is, looking gorgeous as hell with the matte white and black base. Now just going over a quick tour of the console. The new console is much, much smaller than the original Xbox One that debuted and with far less ventilation vents. Goddamn Microsoft, what y'all got in there, Asana? For the most part though, I'm a huge fan of this newer, more simplified look and it really makes it stand out in your entertainment setup and looks really futuristic. The Xbox One S and I have much more in common than I thought as I am a big fan of the pegboard design as you are able to see the big fan on the system's top. The One S has this matte white plastic that engulfs the majority of the console with a contrasting black base and weighs in at 6.4 pounds, much less than the almost 8 pound Goliath that is the Xbox One X. Although, the trade off in size and weight to me is well worth all that power, but that is another video for another day. Dimensionally, the Xbox One S has a way smaller footprint as compared to the original Xbox One, coming in at 11.6 by 9.1 by 2.5 inches. If you opt to get the 2TB version, Microsoft is kind enough and will throw the vertical stand in free for you, where otherwise it would be $20 separately. So now taking a closer look at the front of the console. First up, you'll notice that this looks eerily similar to the Xbox One All Digital, which I have reviewed already and you should definitely check it out. The main difference is of course your inserts for your discs. This is thankfully not a retractable mechanical disc tray that pops out and is rather internal, so all you have to do is gently insert the disc and it automatically goes in and is ready to fire up. Beneath the disc slot is a USB 3.0 port, used to connect wired accessories such as the Xbox One Play and Charge Kit. Immediately flanking the disc slot to the right is your eject button, which of course doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out, but it ejects your discs. To the far right is the console's physical power button, 
and LED indicator to start up the device. Beneath that to the left is your accessory pairing button, and to the right of that is your infrared receiver and blaster which is mainly used to receive signals from the Xbox One remote or to send IR signals to supported devices. On the sides, there isn't much going on except for the cleaner looking circular perforations that push out all the hot air out of the device with a huge circular intake vent that exhausts and pushes out everything that comes in through the sides to manage the internals and keep everything running nice and cool. But if you look closely, on the left you have an eject hole for in the rare event a disc were to get stuck, you can manually take it out. On the back is where we'll see all of our I.O. And from left to right, we have our power port for our universal figure 8 power supply, which thankfully again does away with the huge battery brick and is now all internal. An HDMI out to connect to your TV. An HDMI in to connect to your HDMI compatible cable or satellite receiver two USB 3.0 ports, IR out for an optional IR blaster, optical audio output, a networking port where an ethernet cable would get plugged in, and to the far right is a Kensington lock so that your console can be secured and can connect to a laptop lock and so that it doesn't get stolen. Noticeably absent is the port for the Kinect sensor. This is one of the blunders they face when trying to force this down our throats. Microsoft learned the hard way as no one really goes out of their way to buy the Kinect. If you want to use a Kinect, it gets as complicated as your past relationship. You'll have to buy an adapter that in and of itself has to be powered and inserts into one of the USB 3.0 ports, so it adds quite a bit of cable to the back of the Xbox. The Xbox One controller has also been slightly redesigned as well. I always prefer the feel of the Xbox One controller over the DualShock 4, I'll admit that. I don't know, it's just chunkier and has that heft to it. Only thing I don't really like is the slot for inserting AA batteries instead of already coming with an integrated internal rechargeable battery. But a cool addition is that this now adds Bluetooth for the first time onto the controller, which now doubles the range it can connect up to a much more modest 40 feet. It can also be used to pair to your PC or even your Apple TV and other Apple devices. It now also does add a 3.5mm headphone jack towards the bottom so you can connect your own headphones or mic if you so choose, but still retains the proprietary port for things such as Microsoft's own first party mic headsets. The shoulder buttons are now thinner and sport new switches, which are extremely useful in competitive first person shooters. That is the primary reason your boyfriend or husband is heard yelling late in the hours of the night. I know you'd rather it be you yelling girls, but come on, let your man have some fun. The front of the controller is also much more flush than before and looks really great especially on this white controller. There is now this added texture on the back of the controllers which is great for those with overly sweaty hands. I have a few friends like this like bro the f is wrong with you? You're nervous or what? This should help the boys with sweaty palms grasp a controller better. The removable cover for a set of AA batteries which is so weird to see in 2019. Like I remember doing this with my Game Boy Color. Come on now Microsoft get with the times. You can buy a rechargeable battery pack to eliminate double A's, but of course, surprise surprise, it's sold separately. Everything else on the controller is largely unchanged. Still have our D-pad, two joysticks, glowing Xbox logo, X, Y, B, A buttons, and so on. Internally, we get the same power under the hood with some slight improvements, but doesn't come close to touching the superiority of the Xbox One X. Really what's important to know about the Xbox One S over the original is that with titles that support it, the Xbox One S can upscale games to 4K. Both obviously support and play games at 1080p natively, but the important distinction here is that in the Xbox family line, the Xbox One X is the only one that can support native 4K and HDR. While the One S does upscale it and make for better picture as compared to 1080p, playing games natively at 4K yields vastly superior graphics. However, if you are subscribed to streaming platforms that support 4K and are willing to pay the premium tier for things like Netflix and have a 4K television, then you will also be able to view that content in 4K using your Xbox One S. Still though, under the hood, you have some pretty impressive specs. It features an 8-core Jaguar CPU clocked at 1.75 GHz, 8 GB of DDR3 RAM, 12 CUs clocked at 914 MHz with 1.23 teraflops on the GPU end and come in either a 500 gig, 1 terabyte, or 2 terabyte variant. This model here is the 1 terabyte variant and normally MSRP is for $299, but I was able to snag it for $279 at Walmart, saving me a good $20. That's about half a tank of gas. It's pretty good. All of this, for my ill informed tech audience, translates to some pretty impressive performance even if upscaled. The 4K looks fantastic on this machine, much better than the PS4 Slim. 
it runs great and has enough power to plow through the most graphically intensive AAA titles. At the Microsoft Online Store, you'll be able to find a wide selection of games ranging from first person shooters to adventure to great indie titles. Just like PS4, if you want to play multiplayer, you'll have to purchase Xbox Live Gold which is a bit pricier than PS Plus, coming in at $10 for one month, $25 for three months, or the best value. $60 for a year, but just like PlayStation, you do get two free games every single month, so there is that. The gaming experience is what you've come to love from Xbox and truly is, at heart, a much better entertainment system as compared to the PS4 Slim, with the capability to upscale those games and also stream your content through the likes of Netflix at 4K. Even at launch, Microsoft was very adamant in advertising this console as an entertainment system, but over the years has lacked in delivering. In truth, as much as I love the Xbox and as many dislikes I'll get from Xbox fanboys for the following statement, you just have to admit, at least this console generation, Xbox, you shot yourself in the foot. At the beginning, Xbox's prestigious name was forever tarnished with its initial blunders, but since have taken drastic steps to recover. For instance, they now have their more affordable all digital console for those who prefer to download digital games and hate being social and driving to interact with other human beings. They have the higher spec Xbox One X for those gamers needing to play their games in the best resolution and on a console that rightfully so edges out as the most powerful console this generation. But the damage has been done. People loyal to Microsoft felt blindsided by its initial launch and have since converted entirely to PlayStation. I've seen it with my own eyes. Estimates from this year have the PS4 nearing 100 million units sold, while the Xbox One having sold just above 45 million units, less than half of both consoles since they launched, with both launching within a week of each other back in 2013. There's no denying though, the Xbox One S is a hell of a console and at $300 will get you plenty of years of good memories gaming to your heart's content. With the soon to be released 9th generation of consoles, it's a tough call to make. For casual gamers who really aren't too invested into the realm of video games, sure, why not? But for those who follow the gaming world a little more closely, I say hold out and wait to see what Microsoft has in store for us next year. Who knows, they might get started on the right foot and surprise us all. There's a lot to love about the Xbox One S, with their huge library of fun and exclusive games like Forza and the Halo series. And with the console wars raging between Sony and Microsoft, sometimes it just goes down to what your buddies play on. If your squad plays on Xbox, then pick up the Xbox, makes sense, right? Whichever console you get, don't sleep on the One S as it makes a formidable choice. I hope you guys found this review helpful. If you did, slap a huge fat like on this video, and if you think it sucked, you know what to do. Don't forget to subscribe for more future content just like this, and I'll catch all of your beautiful faces in the next video. Peace out.